Glory, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. God is good all the time. <laughs> Psalm 1. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Psalm 1, verse 1. I don't think it's any coincidence this, this is the first psalm and this is how it begins. Amen? What does it say? Bless is the man. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, hold on a second. Blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. But cursed are those who walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I want to share with you something that this country has been cursed and it's coming out of it. Why? Because they took ungodly counsel. Now the word says whatever you sow, you what? You reap. So no matter what, you have to reap. Now we have been reaping for a while. We've been reaping with all these corrupt presidents. We've been reaping up and down in the economy. We have been reaping all kinds of things because even when you repent, you still reap. Amen? That's all it does is stop more of the reaping. But we still reap whatever we have sowed. And hopefully, God turns that into what? Good. Now, that's if we get in divine order. But it says, bless is the man. In other words, America has been compromised. The body of Christ has even been compromised. It takes one compromise to make a decision of compromise to open door to a curse. One compromise. One simple compromise. And I want to share with you that the Holy Spirit is trying to emphasize this, trying to express this to his people of where we are and what's going on. One compromise can destroy your life. One compromise can steal every blessing from you. One compromise, that's all it takes. One. Why? Because a compromise is disobedience. It's not obedience. It's disobedience. That means you've been influenced by something called a demon. A demon. And right now, what we're seeing is so many bodies, human bodies, that are run by demon spirits. They are everywhere. Everywhere. You are seeing the manifest. You're seeing rebellion. You're seeing compromise. These are all bodies with spirits in them. Does everybody understand? And don't get me wrong. You make a mistake. You repent. You get up quickly, right? That's different. But when you do this and maintain that position, and you don't even see what's what, and you continue in that state, then more spirits come. You know, the Word says that you and I are afflicted when we went astray. Amen? God doesn't put sickness on people. The devil does. Does everybody understand? So it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the dying, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Again, this is vital. Because we have been reaping in this country, and now people are reaping. But thank God, God put a president in that surrounds him by godly counsel. Does everybody understand it? It's amazing and because what happened before? All of these presidents, all of these congressmen, policy, they were going to worldly counsel. They weren't seeking godly counsel. Oh, the worldly counsel has big certificates of whatever. They know how to uh, buy, sell. Invest, they know how to do all kinds of other things. But is that what God says to do? See, people will go to the world. When you accept the worldly counsel, you are accepting ungodly counsel. Does everybody understand it? That is a difference. You and I are not of the world anymore. So why would we accept counsel from the world? 
We'd have to be plain dumb and stupid or deceived and demonized. We don't accept counsel from the world. We accept counsel from God. Godly counsel from his office. Amen. And you got to be careful some of these counsel, Christian counselors because they're worldly too. Is everybody all right? So what's happening is there's been such a compromise. Now God is trying to rearm. Amen. Rearm. He's trying to arm America again. How do we get armed again? With truth. Truth is what arms me and you. And walking in the truth, practicing the truth, living the truth, loving the truth. We need to be armed. Amen. And God is arming America right now. And he's arming the body of Christ. That's why judgment comes first to the body. Listen, America wouldn't be in the state it was if the body of Christ was in a better state it should have been. I mean, think about who voted Obama into office, who was an antichrist. The body of Christ did. Why? Because of they compromised. If the body of Christ stood up, and was discerning and not compromised at the time, none of these idiots would have got in an office. Is everybody okay? Revelation 12. God has given us the world. It's amazing now. It's not better than what it should be. Revelation 12. People calling themselves Christians that don't even get in fellowship, don't read the Word of God, don't worship, don't do nothing. I'm a Christian. No, you're not. You're deceived. You've been compromised, taking worldly counsel. Oh, happy days. Revelation 12, verse 7. Let's speak it. Arming America. How many of y'all know God birthed America? You know, America is considered in the area of Elijah. Israel is like Moses. Does everybody understand that? It was the law and the spirit. That's why we have a statue of liberty. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. I know there's all kinds of other demonic symbols associated with whatever, but still God has placed America as a place of free because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This country is the blessed, most blessed country in the world. We are the most prosperous country in the world. We do the most outreaches globally in the world. It is the largest distribution of Bibles to the world. That's why this country hasn't gone down. And God has never forsaken America. Because there are those who did not forsake him. Amen? In verse 7, it says what? And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place for found for them in heaven any longer. This was God's presence. Amen. Third heaven. And they were removed. So the dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan who does what? Who does what? Who does what? Is he still deceiving? Yeah, he's deceiving the whole world. It's not over. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. His Christ is his anointed one and his anointing. Amen. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is the Christ. So he's trying to get his Christ, his presence, his power, and his truth to his children to turn things around. But I want you to know religiosity prevents a person from getting to that place. Those are religious demons. Oh, I don't believe in that tongues. I don't believe in casting out devils. I don't believe in that. Of course you don't. Nothing but a host of demons now, even though you're calling Jesus your Lord, but he's not your Lord. He may be your Savior, but he isn't your Lord. 
Because when he's your Lord, you don't have a life. He does. He, you are submitting to him. You live for him. You don't live for you no more. You and I don't own nothing when he's Lord. He owns it all. We acknowledge him in every area we set him before us. He is Lord, not Savior. He's beyond Savior. Thank you, Lord. Savior got me in. Now he's my Lord. Now that's a whole different thing. And when people lose the fear of the Lord, they lose lordship. They lose who he is. And that's what's happened in this country. See, the compromise is to lose the fear of the Lord. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. It says here, Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation, strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I did not love their lives to death. Sounds like deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Because he knows that time, he has a short time. How many of y'all know he knows he has a short time right now? He knows he has a short time. Listen, we don't have much time left. <laughs> we don't have much time left. And I don't think many people get it. There's certain things that need to be fulfilled. We're just waiting for those simple little things to be fulfilled. Seven-year treaty, boom. And I believe uh, Trump's administration is going to get a seven-year treaty in Israel. Amen? Amen. He's the only one that ever set up the, uh, 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 moved, moved our embassy to Jerusalem. Out of all these years that we've been in existence, the United States, no one's ever fulfilled that promise except for this president. That tells you this is it. And time is here. He is surrounded by men and women of God. He's the only one that's allowed laid hands on him. They have Bible studies every day. They removed all the Islamic stuff, all the Muslim stuff that Obama brought in. Why? Because he's Islam. Does everybody understand it? He is not a Christian. He is a liar. And so is his whole administration. They were serving Antichrist, trying to destroy this country. Him and all the other ones, Clintons, or Bushes, Carters, and all of them. They're all a part of the Antichrist organization they call Deep State. They have their own military and everything else. They have been lying and deceiving America. They're involved in drug smuggling, human smuggling, child molestation, sacrifices. They're involved in all of it. And it's not just the United States. This is a global operation that they run. So right now they run the media. They run everything. But they're being exposed. Our president just activated the Marine Reserves. Why? For civil war. He knows when the arrests come, people are going to start getting crazy. You know, there's going to be about 120,000 arrests coming. Make sure it ain't you. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, now when the dragon saw that, verse 13, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he per persecuted the women who gave birth to the male child. Now we know that it's Israel. Amen? And when the dragon saw, and um, verse 14, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she would be nourished for time, times, and half times. That's three and a half years. And from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman 
and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Now, the rest of her offspring means that the woman has been removed. But she had offspring left over. Why? Those are the ones that weren't right with God. But they knew the church, proclaiming to be Christians, walked away from the Lord, went to Savior. Hello? Does everybody understand? And they were left behind. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the commandments of God. These are Jews that be, got born again now. Why? Because they realized during the rapture that that was true. And have the testimony of Christ Jesus. These were Christians who were backslidden, who were not in position. See, war is in the unseen realm against evil forces of darkness that blind, deceive, and invade human beings. They invade their minds, their bodies, their will, and their emotions to fulfill their agenda of corruption and destruction. This is continuous. It's not a one-time event. It's continuous. Satan's evil forces of demons, angels, humans, technology, media, governments, politicians, all in education, even Hollywood. Journalists, websites, etc. is used to mislead, blind, enslave, and disarm individuals and America physically and spiritually. What are they trying to do right now? Disarm us. They're trying to come against the Constitution and, and take our Second Amendment right to bear arms. You know, bearing arms is essential. Why? Because if the government turns on you, you have protection. If this country is ever invaded, the government isn't going to be able to protect everyone. You're going to have to protect yourself. And not only that, if somebody steals, comes and breaks in your house, you have the right to kill them. Hello? I was watching something. This woman was all upset and whatever about her son got shot and killed because he held up a store with a gun. But the owner of the store pulled out a gun and killed him. It's like, okay. It's a bummer you lost your son. I'm sorry to hear that. But don't go raging at the guy that shot and killed your son. Your son shouldn't have gone in there and held him up with a gun. It's really that simple. Hello. But they want to disarm us. You know, Florida just passed a law saying the teachers can be armed. Hallelujah. I love it. But, you know, they got these safe zones, you know. It's amazing in how these disarmed safe zones is where people go in with machine guns and kill people because there's nobody there, and then they promote it. How stupid can you be? Okay, this area is a safe zone. They probably got it all mapped out on yellow. Highlight. These are all safe zones of all these schools that are safe zones. Why? There's no protection. So any moron, demonized individual can go in there and shoot and kill whoever he want. This is wrong. Why? Because America has been compromised, and we're still reaping from it. People should have voted out these people. Hallelujah. So again, they want to mislead, blind, enslave, and disarm America physically and spiritual arms of weapons that can combat and defeat invaders that will come to steal, kill, and destroy. They would take our freedom they would destroy our health, amen, our wealth and families. But the Christ came to expose this evil and arm his righteous ones. So you and I could destroy the deceptors and deception rulers. You know, one of the things that began to happen in the compromising, they started by normalizing sin and perversion. It started with a normalization. They began to normalize lying and bloodshed and socialism. Uh, they're trying to normalize this. It's okay. And then they put in these professors that were trained that are just nothing but bodies with demon spirits in them that are teaching lies. They're trying to dumb down and mislead in different education now. I mean, come on. You can come in with any other book but a Bible in many schools. Kids are getting thrown out because they have a Bible during lunch. 
Or they have a t-shirt about Christ. But you can come in with, you know, skull and crossbones and all kind of perverse sayings. You can come in dressed as a woman if you're a dude. You can come in dressed as a guy if you're a girl. You can even share the same bathroom. Not with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. They'll be casting out devils in the bathroom. You'll be flipping and flopping on the floor. What are you, a man or a girl? It don't matter. Come out. You're a demon. Hallelujah. They infiltrated the minds through compromise so that an individual rejects conviction. They alter the conscience. Again, they, they nummified, they, they dumbed down the desire to search out truth. They promote an alternative ego with drugs and sex and pornography and greed and love of money. You can get the tape. <laughs> they steal your freedom and fight with false promises of fame, wealth, riches. What are they trying to do? Purchase a human soul? And many people are selling them out. Many become slaves of deception and messengers of deception. What happens is they begin to steal the fear of God, reality of God, and identity of God. This all begins with a simple compromise if it's let continuously go. Again, America has been compromised. The body of Christ got compromised. But God is arming again. Amen? He's arming. He's not forgotten America nor us. So he's causing, uh, the powers of darkness are causing individuals because they've compromised the fear of God, the reality of God, and identity of God, so they make humans God. In Romans chapter 1. Hallelujah. Everybody there, verse 18. Let's speak it. Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Is the truth being suppressed these days? Yeah. Again, I want to emphasize that because people are still looking at the person, we got to look beyond that. These are human bodies with demon spirits. Human bodies with demon spirits. Human bodies with demon spirits. I don't care if they proclaim to be a Christian or not. If they promote same sex, if they promote abortion, if they're promoting wickedness. See, when an individual compromises and stays in that position, God looks at it as wickedness. Amen? There is no boundary. There's no gray area. You're, it's either righteousness or unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is wickedness. Amen? In verse 19, because what may be known as God has manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're without excuse. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them you're without excuse. <laughs> no excuse notes. Amen? Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image 
made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God has gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which, is, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. Sounds like the Democratic Party. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God. Yep, that's them. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil. Oh, yeah, that's them. Disobedient to parents, discerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. That's them. Who, knowing the righteousness judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those things who practice them. Wow. Many Americans and Christians have strayed from the truth in fear of God, selling their birthright. Or never reaching it. America and the world have become compromised of truth and reality, not understanding their spiritual and physical battles. These demonic war entities have invaded human bodies to steal your right to defend, arm with weapons of defense and freedom to express Christianity. They've invaded in judges, senators, and congressmen, and attorneys, and law firms, and lawmakers. They're, again, they're trying to steal our Second Amendment. They're trying to disarm us. That ought to show it right there that they're not right. I mean, come on. Who, doesn't your enemy want to disarm you? So if somebody's trying to disarm you, they are your enemy. Ephesians 6. Now, we want to disarm people that are dangerous. Don't get me wrong. Dangerous to the cause. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Arming America. God is arming America physically. And spiritually. Verse 10, finally, everyone say finally. You know, finally means like, yo, hello, finally. It's like somebody shaking somebody going, yo, you got this? Come on, this is the last time I'm going to tell you, finally. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil's influence. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, disembodied spirits, amen, demons. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Again, we must be reminded all the time we are warring. There's <laughs> war, uh, an unseen war. There's an unseen influence that is invading humanity. The world has been invaded. They're waiting for an alien invasion. It's already done. It happened in the garden. <laughs> That's the first place it got invaded. Hello? And it's been going on ever since. They put on flesh. They came in, went into women, and produced offsprings. Then they started taking seeds and producing, trying to genetically change, starting their own race. Now we got hybrids, shapeshifters. We got all kinds of demonic forces out there. 
We've got politicians and judges, senators, congressmen, ambassadors, kings and queens, and all kinds of regimes of demonic forces. There's militaries, all kinds of things going on out there. And it's up to the body of Christ to invade their places. It's up to the body of Christ to pray through and invade. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Your government will not rescue you. Only God can. The anointing. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Not a spirit expressly. That's almost like saying finally. Says that in their latter times. Are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith. Why? Because they will compromise. They will lose the fear of God. They will lose their identity. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. These are called demons. And doctrines of demons which they are carrying. It is their agenda. We see in the media doctrines of demons. It's their agenda that they're promoting. They don't even give a hoot if you know they're lying. There was a guy in CNN that's going to be exposed. Of course, they're trying to kill him. They've got to put him under protection. He worked for CNN. He got, he, he, he got to a point where he couldn't handle it any longer. He was a Democrat himself. But he saw such corruption through the organization and the anti-Trump and so much corruption. He said he couldn't take it anymore and turned to be a whistleblower. And began, he recorded and filmed all kinds of stuff. He's blowing their socks off. See, God is turning hearts around these days. See, one of, truth arms people. Amen? But lies put people in bondage. So God is beginning to kick over those tables all over. He's exposing. Amen? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons to create all... An old, uh, to, to create an open area to bodies. They want one world religion, one world government, one world currency, one di dictator called Satan. That's what they're promoting. They're not going to tell you, look, we're servants of Satan. Yeah, we just ate a kid the other night. And whatever. We sacrificed, uh, you know, my neighbor. They're not going to say these things out loud. See, to maintain their positions, they must sacrifice. They must shed blood to maintain their position. You think 9-11 was an accident? No way. That was a sacrifice. And many other things. You think the shootings in Las Vegas was an accident? No. That was a sacrifice. You think a lot of these deaths that these Hollywood movie stars is an accident? No, they were sacrificed. In John chapter 8. These people make contracts with the devil to receive big money, become movie stars, musicians, rock stars, and everything else. But then they got to hold their position. They got to maintain their position. So they have to do something. Not only that, that they have to attend certain satanic rituals. They got to do some strange things. John 8 and verse 44. We have it on Eternal Library, if you've ever seen the, uh, uh, I don't know what's something, contract, movie contract, music contract. What is it? Luciferian contract? Yeah. And the girl, one of the movie stars that stepped out of it was explaining everything, man. That they have to get together, they eat, eat 
drink urine and all kinds of, I mean, it's nasty. They got to do some strange things, have sex with animals. The people are not even married. I mean, they're married, but there is no marriage covenant. They're each other's. That's why you see everybody just floating from one. You, you pick up a, you read a magazine there. You go to check out in the grocery line. There's a magazine. Oh, this one's married to this. Oh, this one. No, this one's, no, this one's married. I mean, you don't know who they're married to. They were with this one, that one, and the other one. Because there really is no covenant marriage with them. The only one they're married to is Satan. This is reality. This is happening. People are so blinded to what's really going on. It's incredible. Let me tell you, if, if you could really see everything that was going on, it would get you sick. I mean, literally sick. Romans 8, 44. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. What did Jesus say? You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a what? Murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of one. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Whoa. Why? Because they've been taken captive by the father of lies. So these are now bodies with demon spirits. They are running that individual's life. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter five. And verse eight. First Peter five eight. He says, Be what? Sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means big mouth. Big mouth. Did you ever notice that many of these places where they're trying to talk in colleges or whatever, a Christian gets called in or a conservative gets, gets called in to, to speak, everybody's yelling. They won't allow them to speak. Why? Because they got big mouths, just like what this says here. They're called roaring lions. Seeking whom... He may devour. See, they don't want to hear it because they can't hear it because they're not of God. Does everybody get this? You know, this is crazy, and I've said this over and over. Every Democrat is going to hell. That's sick until they come out of it. They're going to wake up in hell. There is no fear of God in them. They do not reverence and honor and respect the Lord at all. They promote the things that God hates. Come on, let's get real. Anyone going to get into heaven who does that? If you promote the things that God hates, you're going to get into heaven? No, that's not according to his doctrine. There's a sign that says justice and righteousness. And those who practice righteousness and will get into heaven. Those who practice lawlessness will not. Amen? Praise God. So we know that it's a big mouth. It's all about lies, roaring lion, big mouths, false promises. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 18. Hallelujah. What does it say? For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. 
For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they again entangle, are entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. That's intense. He says, for it would have been better for them not to even known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But as it, is, it happens to them according to the true proverb, a dog, which is demonized individual, returns to his own vomit, and so having washed to her wallowing in mire. Again, swelling words. Why? Because it started with a compromise. A simple compromise that escalated. And this escalation, the fear of God was removed. The reality, the, the identity was removed. The fear is reverence, honor, and respect. That's the fear of the Lord. It was removed. The identity was stolen. And Psalm 36 Psalm 36. Hallelujah. Start at verse 1. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. What does it say? There is no fear of God before his eyes. So God calls the wicked anyone that's lost the fear of God. For he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed and sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. In other words, he doesn't reject it anymore. He doesn't hate evil anymore. He actually communes with it, fellowships with it. He calls them wicked. Why? Because there's no fear of God anymore. Deuteronomy 10. Arming America takes arming the body of Christ. Deuteronomy 10, 12. Again, people, what happens, the enemy goes, removes an individual from being under a place where Jesus is Lord to Savior. Moves them from the holy place to the outer court. And the next thing to outer court is outer darkness. Again, there's a difference. That's the compromise. I'm telling, and this is something that you and I got to constantly look at. Is, the, is Jesus still Lord or is he Savior? If I've moved from Lord to Savior, I'm in danger. Verse 12, let's speak it now, Israel. Well, you know, when God speaks of Israel, he speaks of the body. What does the Lord your God require of you? But to what? Fear the Lord your God. That's the first thing. And to walk in all of his ways and to love him. To serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. For whose good? Our good. Indeed, heaven and the highest of heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love him, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart. And be stiff-necked no longer. That's rebellious. For the Lord your God is, God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him. 
and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. This is a requirement. What's the first thing? Fear the Lord your God. Amen. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, verse 18 and 19. What's it say? Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who what? Fear him. You want God's eyes on you? I reverence, honor, and respect him. Amen. That's his presence, his word. His assembling, his fellowship, anything that's associated and connected to him with the honor, respect, whatever it is. On those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Those are the ones who reverence, honor, and respect the Lord. In other words, he's first. Again, people are not telling themselves enough who told me that. They compromise easily. Listen, if you're an individual that's compromising that easily, you're in danger. And you're dangerous to yourself and to others until you get connected. Probably need to get delivered again. Hallelujah. And Psalm 111. Psalm 111. You know, when the enemy knows he's got you once, you think he comes back again? Amen. He doesn't quit till he gets you again. He doesn't stop. Psalm 111. Is everybody there? Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the what? Beginning of wisdom. This is not worldly wisdom. This is godly wisdom. A good understanding of those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 8. Beginning of wisdom. That's wisdom from above. Again, that compromise allowed an individual to go from Lord to Savior Compromised identity, lost the fear of God, then opened the door to demonic activity. Proverbs 8, verse 12. Everybody there? Let's speak it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Hello. Is a lie evil? It's compromise evil. Amen. Pride and arrogance and the evil way. Or what do you hate? Pride, arrogance. Amen. Anything to do with it. We're to hate evil. And the perverse mouth I hate. Counsels mind and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles and all judges of the earth. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. Praise God. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. 
Proverbs 14, verse 26. Is everybody there? Okay. Let's speak it together. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. In a multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the lack of people is the downfall of a prince. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding. He who is impulsive exalts folly. Let's go to Proverbs 15. And go to verse 16. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. <laughs> Better is a dinner of herbs where is love than fatted calf with hatred. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allows contention. Verse 33. It says, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is what? Humility. Proverbs 16, verse 6. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Proverbs 19. And verse 23. All the things about the fear and reverence to the Lord. Verse 23, what does it say? The fear of the Lord leads to what? Life. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. Wow. In other words, God has put such a hedge of protection, evil can't penetrate. That's why he tries to compromise. Proverbs 22. If you remember the story with Job, remember the devil, uh, Satan came to the Lord, right? And the Lord is the one who introduced Job to the devil. But the Lord said to the devil, have you noticed my servant Job? <laughs> and we wouldn't want our name mentioned up there, will we? Have you noticed, the, you know, some, some such in this room? Heck no, don't tell my name, you know. But look at if you're walking in the fear of God, you're filled with the Spirit of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about, man. If you're not compromising, if you're not complacent, if you're not, listen, if you're not self-justifying, if you're constantly self-examining and knowing what you're listening to, amen, if you're not, if you come out from a mug and you're not touching unclean things, you're going to be protected. But the beauty of it is that Job was an innocent man. And I love because God used Job to slap the devil in the head. Now, Job lost everything. But the first thing that the devil had to do, because he said to the Lord, man, I can't even get to him. He's protected. Does everybody understand that? That's how it should be for me and you. Can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Right? Everyone say, can't touch this. If you're in right position, you're in the secret place of the Most High, you're not touching unclean things, there's no leaking, the devil can't get to you. He can't touch you. And when he throws those airplanes that has a note on it, don't open it and read it. But it's the same thing that happened to Job. So the Lord allowed Job to kill 
uh, uh, he, he allowed the, the devil to kill all of Job's cattle. Because Job sacrificed every day. Why? Because the blood. He was offering up the sacrifice of the blood. He was maintaining covenant with God no matter what. He said, look, at he, doesn't shun, he shuns evil and he doesn't curse or nothing. He doesn't open his mouth at the things that are bad. Doesn't touch anything that's unclean. The devil couldn't touch him. So the Lord allowed the devil, Satan, to remove his head, his animals, so he'd get to them. And then, of course, it, multiple times, the devil came up and said, well, okay, I've done this, but how about this? Yeah, well, I'll bet he'll curse you now, and I'll bet he'll curse you now. <laughs> and the Lord allowed the devil to do so much. And Job lost everything. Even his wife came out and said, look at man, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, no way. I brought nothing in here. I'm taking nothing out. He's blessed me my whole life. You know, so it, 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 in this, we've got to begin to look at what God says, his promises. See, Job was living from the future. Amen? You remember when Abraham was called to sacrifice Isaac? So what did he do? He took his son to sacrifice Isaac, his only son. Think about this. But what did he say? He said, man, I know that the Lord, if he dies, the Lord's going to raise him from the dead. Why? Because he's the promised seed. He was living from the future. Why? If you're living from God's promises, you're living from the future, not from the past. You're living by what he tells you, nothing else. That's why you got to be careful of what kind of counsel you're getting. Who are you listening to? Listen, if they're not unplugged from the world, they're your enemy. Amen? Oh, happy days. 22-4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are what? Riches and honor and life. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be rich? Well, you got to have, anybody want to be honored by the Lord? You want to have long life? Then there's two things you got to eat. Humble pie. <laughs> and you must maintain the fear of God. Reverence and honor and respect. And it's not, listen, it's reverence, honor, and respect in everything you do, in every decision, in every purchase, everything you do, finances, health, everything. You must honor God. Lord, is this pleasing you or displeasing you? Is this what you want me to do? If you put him before you, then you're honoring him. Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen? Proverbs 1. Let's go back to one. Proverbs 1. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 28. Verse 28. Proverbs 1. He said, Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. Hello, do you see this? I'm going to say that. He says in verse 20, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. So if he's not answering, guess who is? They will seek me diligently, but they're not going to find me. Because they hated knowledge. And they did not choose the reverence and honor and respect of him. They would have none of my counsel. But they accepted worldly counsel. And despise my every rebuke. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way. 
and be filled with the fruit with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Psalm 50 and verse 16. So when an individual goes from Lord to Savior, he backslides. They actually only use Savior when needed. They lose the fear of God. They compromise. When an individual no longer maintains their commitment... How I many know oh God called us to be committed? Amen. He considers them wicked. See, but the soulish arena will compromise that. It will justify it. Commitment is essential. You and I were not rescued to serve us. We were rescued to serve him. And too many people serve everything else but him. He should be your priority. You should serve him more than anything. Whatever it is, Lord, I want your first. Your first, not me. No, not family, not spouses, not jobs, not money, not anything. What, it's yours. What do you want to do? Uh, if we're not in that place and position, then we have compromised. And if we have compromised, we've, comprom he, we've set him from Lord to just Savior, and we've lost the reverence and honor and respect to him. And that means that we are not faithful to commitment. He can't trust us. In the eyes of God, he says, wicked, not righteous. In Psalm 50, verse 16. But to the wicked, God says, what right do you have to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother and slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I have kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you. But I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forgot God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. What is he saying? What right do you have to share anything about me when you practice wickedness? When you have compromised me and lost the reverence and honor and respect? You have fallen from Lord to Savior. In Matthew 25. So we know and understand that God is not only convicting, rebuking, chastening, and judging his people. Why? So they get back in order. Matthew 25, verse 31. Oh, happy days. You know, when, when you begin to compare the Lord and the devil, the Lord stills you. You know, he stills you. The enemy pushes you. I want to throw some of these out here. The Lord reassures you. The devil frightens you. <laughs> the Lord leads you. The devil misleads you. The Lord brings truth. The devil lies. The Lord enlightens you. The devil confuses you. The Lord gives, the devil takes. 
The Lord forgives, the devil condemns. The Lord encourages, the devil discourages. The Lord comforts, the devil stresses. The Lord heals, the devil brings sickness. The Lord blesses, the devil curses. The Lord frees, the devil enslaves, and the Lord brings life, and the devil kills. Amen. He brings death. So you got to ask yourself, am I totally committed? Am I truly making the Lord, Lord? Or am I still allowing him to be Savior? Am I really committed? Am I 100% sold out to what I'm supposed to do? It says in verse 31, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered together before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. A goat is a sheep and goat. One's rebellious, one's submissive. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, and he will put the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will say, answer him, saying, Lord, when did we do these things? And you hungry, and feed you, and thirsty, and give you drink. And when did we see you, a stranger, and take you in, and or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and come to see you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of these least of these brethren, you did it to me. And he will also say to those on the what? Left. The left. Do you think it's coincidental that it's left? There's the left and the right? <laughs> think about this. This is reality. He's telling us. There are those on the left. They are goats. They are rebellious. There are bodies with human demons. With human demons. There are human bodies with demon spirits. Excuse me. <laughs> they are the left. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed. They are the wicked. Into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And they will also answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and thirsty and sick and naked and so forth and in prison and did not minister to you. And then he will answer them saying, Surely I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. Now that is what Jesus said. So I'm telling you, I can't see any Democrat getting into heaven. I just can't see it. They need to turn their hearts and turn their ways. Matthew 7, and we'll close here. Arming America with prayer and supplication, intercession, this penetrating prayer booklet, we need to get in as many people's hands as we can. Why? You want to arm America? They can go to the uh, gun dealer, but we need to bring this to them. As many places as possible. There's a warfare prayer that's powerful. In fact, the Lord told me today to write another prayer called Arming America. There's all kinds of prayers, and we need to get these out into everybody's hand. When the Lord told me to do the weight loss, pro, weight, weight loss prayer, praise God, I've heard testimonies on it already. Which is powerful. It's encouraging the people to lose weight. I mean, people are trying every kind of diet there is. Well, how about prayer? <laughs> they need divine intervention to lose weight. Praise God. You can't cast out calories, but you know you can change things around. 
But he said that would be one of the areas where it would assist individuals of getting to get healthy and it'll also cause them to come to this prayer book. Lord. This is how we arm America right here. Just this booklet. Amen. Matthew 7, 21. Now, this is powerful. What does it say? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, wait a minute. So they thought that Jesus was Lord, but they lost lordship. They moved from Lord to Savior, and they only used him as Savior. Does everybody understand this? They've backslid him from the holy place to the outer court, and probably to the outer darkness. They've compromised. They lost him as Lord. They lost the fear of God. They lost their identity. The only identity they maintained in this is because they were manifesting the fruits of the Spirit, I mean, the gifts of the Spirit. But the gifts of the Spirit without reproach. God can use a donkey. Amen? He can use anyone. So they're saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Why? Because they're not his Lord. We'll get into heaven. Only those who do my will. And many will say to me in verse 22, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? See, they thought they were saved by works, not relationship. So they did what they wanted to do, go where they wanted to go, do whatever they want. Spend their money, do whatever they wanted to do. He was never Lord. He was Savior. Thank you for saving me. Now I can go do what I want. No, it's not how it is in the kingdom. And done many wonders in your names, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I'll liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the anointing or on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and the beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, does not obey them, does not submit to them, does not put them into practice, does not reverence and honor them, does not fear the Lord, does not, what does the word say? Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling of my word will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. Great was its fall. Arming America takes arming the body of Christ. It's our responsibility to arm America spiritually. Amen. We're to call those things as they are, bringing those things in, asking God for an invention and removing all these politicians and governors and mayors and so forth and calling some destructive fire down in certain places. We're to warfare. Warfare. Yes, you pray for yourself, but don't spend all day praying for yourself. Don't spend, your time should be warfaring and interceding. Amen? There are children that have been abducted. We need to get them loosed. It's up to me and you. It's the body of Christ. And fulfill your commitments that God has called you to do. Remove those emotional idols from your life. Those are unclean things. Yes, emotional idols are unclean. They'll cause you to compromise. You'll step from Lord to Savior. You'll drift from the fear of the Lord. And you'll be thinking everything is fine. But it will catch up to you. And you'll wonder how you got where you did so quickly. And it won't be a good place. Listen, there's more power of darkness, more evil, more influence now than ever. People are falling left and right and being taken out of position. 
they're reaping what they've sowed. Even when they repent, most people repent for what they've lost instead of truly what they've done. It's time. We've got to be serious about our walk and be willing to do whatever it takes. Accept the consequences so we can take those and grow from them. Amen? It is time, and time is running out. And God is dependent on us, the body of Christ. Again, we weren't rescued to build our own empire. We were rescued to build his kingdom. Don't lose sight of that and where we came from. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we thank you for your word. It's been released to us in the warning. And we ask that you guide and protect us so that we may not only arm ourselves and be loose from any compromise and arm America. Lord, help us arm America with the truth, with the anointing, and with intercessory prayers. For your name, for your glory, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.